Ever wondered why, when you first go out for a run uh, or start a workout, you feel really out of breath after about a minute or so? Um, or if you start a game of football or a game of rugby or hockey and feel really out of breath in the first five minutes, but then get into it and you feel fine. I used to find it worse coming on as a substitute in football um, and you really wanted to get into the pace of the game. And no matter how much warming up you do, you still find yourself searching for that second wind uh, to get you up and running. A similar feeling um, in the weights room is after you've lifted a really heavy set um, and you're gasping for air, you may have only lifted three or four repetitions. Well, this phenomenon is known as the oxygen deficit and is where your body naturally transfers from using the anaerobic system, um, not requiring oxygen as the immediate energy source, to the aerobic system, uh, where oxygen um, becomes the dominant source for energy production. But what on earth does that mean? Well, the immediate source of energy for muscle contraction comes from a compound called adenosine triphosphate, or ATP for short. Now, ATP exists in really low concentration within a muscle cell, uh, and the body has evolved three really distinct yet closely integrated processes that operate together to regenerate ATP to allow muscle contraction uh, and satisfy the energy requirements of different physical activities. The first process involves the splitting of the high energy phosphogen, phosphocreatine, which uh, together with the stored um, ATP in the muscle cell provides the immediate energy um, in the initial stages of any intense or really explosive exercise. The second process involves the breakdown of carbohydrate, uh, mainly in the form of muscle glycogen to pyruvic acid and then lactic acid through a process called glycolysis. The third process involves the combustion of carbohydrates and fats and under some circumstances, proteins um, in the presence of oxygen. The splitting of the stored phosphogens, ATP and phosphocreatine, and the breakdown of carbohydrate make up what is known as the anaerobic energy system. And the terms alactic, where lactic acid is not formed, and lactic are often used to describe these anaerobic without oxygen pathways. Now these pathways are capable of regenerating ATP at high rates, resulting in large muscle power outputs. However, the capacity of the anaerobic system is really limited by the amount of energy that could be released in a single exercise bout. Now, in contrast, the aerobic energy system is capable of producing really extremely large amounts of ATP, but is limited by the respiratory and cardiovascular system's ability to deliver oxygen to the muscle. Together, these three energy processes are really well suited to cope with the high and often sustained and usually diverse energy demands placed on them during our daily lives and during physical activity. Their different powers and capacities represent not a disadvantage, but an advantage as they work together smoothly and efficiently to replenish ATP. They each provide energy to perform exercise. Now the breathlessness or second wind that you experience is when the aerobic system takes over at a steady state to transfer energy and replenish ATP using oxygen. <laughs>